Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our children's moment, uh, this kind of cloudy uh, Thursday morning. Um, well, it's cloudy here in Mead. I don't know. Um, anywho, we are going to start by um, setting up our sacred space this morning. Um, it's going to be off to the side because I have a lot of books. So I didn't want it right in front of me today. Hopefully, you will be able to see it just fine. So do you remember what our three reminders of God are? The first one is our symbol, a reminder of God as creator. <laughs> Hi, Carla. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Um, our second reminder, do you remember? This is for God as Christ. There, you can see it a little bit better. And our third reminder is of God as the Holy Spirit. I'm going to light our candle to remind us that God is here with us. So we have God as creator, God as Christ, God as spirit. I'm going to start today with a prayer. And um, somebody asked me yesterday if they had some recommendations for prayer books um, to pray with children and parents at home. And this is one of my new favorites. Uh, this is another Trisha Medlock recommendation, so you know it's going to be pretty fantastic. And it's the Common Prayer for Children and Families by Jennifer Gamber and Timothy uh, Siemens. We're going to start with a prayer that they call Inner Peace. And it reflects on the scripture um, from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 39, which says, Jesus said to the lake, Silent. Be still. The wind settled down and there was a great calm. And here's the prayer for inner peace. God who quiets storms to a whisper and hushes the sea's waves. Quiet the rumbling noises inside of me. Smooth the sharp edges of my soul and give me peace in this stormy time. Amen. So I was thinking, been thinking a lot lately actually, about church and what it means to be the church. It's kind of a strange time to be the church right now, isn't it? because we aren't able to go into the building that we normally think of as church. Yeah, it's kind of different. So how are we the church together? Hmm. You know, as we think about this, this is not the first time that people had to figure out what does it mean to be the church? You see, um, in the Bible, there's this book. It's called the Book of Acts, sometimes called the Book of Acts of the Apostles, uh, which are the early followers of Jesus. It's just a really fancy churchy word for early followers. You don't need to remember it. Um, 
And after Easter, we tend to spend some more time reading from the book of Acts because uh, we try to follow kind of the story of Jesus throughout the year, right? Uh, around Christmas time, we hear the stories about Jesus' birth because that's uh, when we celebrate that. In the spring, we have lots of stories of um, Jesus' uh, death and his resurrection is coming back to life and how his followers started the church after Jesus left them because even after he came back to life, he left again, right? It's not like Elvis. He isn't like still being spotted um, in the physical sense. That's a rabbit hole we don't need to go down. Okay, so figuring out how we can be the church together. Um, this Sunday's scripture, one of the scriptures um, that we might be reading is from um, the book of Acts, where they try to figure that out. But before we dig into that, I thought we might read a little story about what the church is. Sorry, you know me and my coffee. Gotta have it. Okay. This book is called, This is the Church. So we're gonna start here. And this is another beaming book because they are just fantastic and they give us permission to read <laughs> their books online right now. Um, and this is written by Sarah Raymond Cunningham and illustrated by Ariel Lamley. There's a little rhyme that children say, a song that they sing sometimes when they play. The rhyme is about God's family. To do it, just move your hands like me. Okay, we're gonna try to do this together. So you put your hands together like this. You can kind of see that. So here's the church, here's the steeple. Open the doors and see all the people. What a great rhyme, isn't it neat? But wait, this story's not yet complete. There's more to the church than just those two lines. To learn about God's family, let's add to this rhyme. Some churches are so big and why 10,000 people can fit inside. Other churches are really quite small. They fit just a few, and that is all. Some people have church right where they are, right in their houses. That's not very far. We've all become that right now, haven't we? Not all churches have roofs and floors. Some don't have steeples. Some don't have doors. Some people have church under the stars. And God comes and meets them right where they are. In the places where it's not safe to be found, some people even have church underground. And church isn't something that stands still, you know. The church follows God's people wherever they go. The church moves in buses, planes, and cars to share God's love the church has gone far. The church works among the sick, hungry, and poor, with people in need wherever they are. You know what? I think even right now when we aren't able to move as much, the church is still moving, isn't it? Yeah, because people are still helping. It's gone to cities, it's gone to towns, to school, and to work, 
the church gets around. But how does this work? How can this be? Can a church really move like you and me? What do you think? Can the church really move like that? That's the secret. It certainly can. Church moves through your feet. It works through your hands. The people are the church. Don't you see? Church is a word for God's family. Because Jesus said, where two or three who gather in my name, that's where I'll be. So let's go back to the old rhyme now. Get your hands ready. We'll show you how. I'll show you that and then get ready. All right, are you ready to do this with me? Here's the building. It may have a steeple, but where's the church? The church is the people. On this day, the church welcomes you. You're part of God's people. You're the church too. And that's the end. This is the church. Hmm. What did you think about that book? Have you thought about how church is different now? Hmm. How have you felt about connecting to the church when we can't go into the building and see each other? Have you still seen God moving in the world around you? Yeah, it's really different now, but it's kind of really cool to see the new ways that we are able to be the church. And it's a really cool time to just think differently about how we can be the church. So I hope that you take some time to kind of think about that this week. We're gonna read another story. Um, and this one is from that, um, that uh, book from the Bible that I was telling you about, Acts. And this is a story about how the early followers of Jesus, the fancy named apostles, um, and how they had to figure out how to be the church after Jesus left. Because at first they were used to all just following Jesus around and doing what he said. But then Jesus went back up to heaven and they had to figure out what to do now because their old way of being wasn't working anymore. We're in a very similar spot, aren't we? So let's listen to this story and imagine that we are one of those early apostles and we are trying to figure out how we can be church too. Okay, got the coffee, now we can read. And this comes from my new favorite children's Bible, Growing in God's Love, a story Bible. This one's not theming books, though, so sorry. This one's Westminster John Knox Press. I don't know. I assume they'll let us read it. Okay. Living Together. This is based on Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, as well as chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. And if you want, you can get um, a Bible at home and you can read the full story instead of just the children's one. So this is called Living Together. When children move in next door, it takes time to get to know each other. As you play together, you learn how to get along. 
For example, you find ways to agree on the rules for a game you are playing. After all, the people were baptized on, after all the people were baptized on Pentecost, they needed to learn how to get along. Have you ever had to learn how to get along with someone? Maybe you had to learn how to get along when you are at home together more often. Let's see what they did. The people who believed in Jesus wanted to be together. After they were baptized, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. A reminder of the Holy Spirit. But how are they going to live together day after day? The disciples taught them about Jesus and what he taught. The people ate meals together like a family. They spent time together like a family. They also prayed for one another. When one person was shivering in the cold, someone gave him a coat and he was warm again. Perhaps another person was hungry. Someone gave her food and they ate together. When anything was needed, those who owned things sold them. They gave the money to the believers so that everyone had enough. No one was left out. Because they were faithful, they were all faithful Jews, the people went to the temple every day. When they got home again, they ate together. They prayed and ate and laughed together. Everyone was happy and loved. Other people watched them. More and more people believed in Jesus. More and more people were baptized. More and more people showed everyone God's love by the way they lived. Hmm. That's our story. And you can see this is maybe what those very first folks would have looked like being the church, living together and sharing food. And this is maybe what sharing food might look like today. So let's do our reflections here. What does it sound like when people are praising God? How do you praise God? Ask someone you love how it sounds when they praise God. Ooh, I like that question. For me, music is a really important part about how I praise God. So I bet that there would be some really cool instruments or groups of people singing for praising God. But maybe it could be quiet too. Hmm. Okay, C. Who is in your church? Look around the next time you are there. Draw a picture of the people you see. These people are part of your church family. Remember this book that we just read, our church family isn't necessarily gathered together in the building right now. So what, what does church family look like now? That's kind of a cool question. And if you have a pen pal, maybe you could draw a picture of the church family and send it to your pen pal. That could be cool. Okay. Last one, act. Look at the pictures on these pages. How are people showing love or helping others? What are some ways you can share with others? So here are the pictures. I am assuming that you can see because I am blocking the view for me. So what did you see there? How are people showing love or helping others? 
Most importantly, how can you show love and help others? Hmm. Those are some really good questions about how we can be church. And I really like both of these stories from Acts and from this picture book here really help us to rethink what church is. And it's so much bigger than what we maybe used to think it's not just the people in the building. All right. Well, let's say one more prayer together, and then we'll put our symbols, our reminders of God away. So I'm going to pull out our Common Prayer for Children and Families book again, which you can get on Amazon if you like it. Um, this one is actually called disappointment. And I liked this prayer because sometimes when we're going through times of change, when, when things are different than what we're used to, we can feel disappointed at first, even if we grow into really, really loving this new thing. And this, um, the scripture that um, kind of inspired this uh, prayer is from Psalms chapter 40, verse 1. And this is an adapted version, so it's, um, they played with it a little bit. Okay. Um, so this is the verse. I put all my hope in you, O oh God. You lean down to me. You listen for my cry for help. Again, that's from uh, Psalms chapter 40. So will you pray with me? Loving God, you are with us in the good times and the bad. When life doesn't go as planned, when we are disappointed with others, with the world, or with ourselves, listen to our prayer. Send your Holy Spirit to comfort us. Wrap us in your everlasting arms. Amen. So we're going to put away our reminders now. Our reminder of God as creator. Our reminder of God as Christ. And our reminder of God as the Spirit. May the peace and love of Christ be with you this day and every day. Amen. <laughs>